90 euros. But that sucked. At the end of March earlier this year, me and Emma went on a little sunrise photo mission to Longholmen, an island near central Stockholm. Well, actually, the whole city of Stockholm is pretty much built on a series of little islands, but we chose this particular one because it has a great view over City Hall and the sun just happened to rise over the water in the same direction. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Fredrik and I run a video pr Actually, that's not quite true. I currently run three video production companies. Fodson Media, which I started in 2017 and kind of also incorporates this, my Kvarphoto YouTube channel. Ocular Media Production, that I run together with my partner Emma since January of this year. And Nordflix Visuals, which is a collaboration between myself and my buddy Thomas, where we mainly make music videos and other fun little side projects. In my spare time, I like to collect and shoot vintage film cameras. And I really enjoy the idea of grabbing something like an old SLR, a roll of film and going on little adventures to shoot stuff. On that topic, there are a few things I want to get out of the way before we start. The camera I used for this first outing was my Canon AE-1 program in absolute mint condition. Introduced in April of 1981, meaning it's almost as old as I am. Attached to the front was a Canon FD 50mm f1.4 SSC, or Super Spectra Coating, that came bundled with the camera when I bought it off a Japanese eBay store a while ago. Well, actually, it's probably more the other way around. As mentioned in my channel presentation video recently, the main reason I got into vintage cameras and film photography in the first place was due to exploring the vast world of vintage lenses for my video work. These oldies often have sought after optical characteristics or perfect imperfections that give a certain cinematic look. Now that's a whole topic on its own, but often when you find good deals on old glass, it comes as a kit with a camera body attached to it. Anywho, the film I chose to put in the camera was the cheapest one I could find at the time. A 24 frame roll of regular Kodak Ultramax 400 that I paid 15 euros for back in March. So still not exactly cheap. My lab of choice for developing and scanning my first couple of rolls, including this one, was the nearby Crimson Photo Lab. I chose the lowest resolution scanning option too, since I didn't even know if the camera worked properly or if the film was going to render any photos at all. Therefore, the quality of the photos you're about to see aren't exactly stellar. And that definitely has nothing to do with my lacking skills as a photographer or anything. Shut up. I should also mention that I've done some very minor editing to the photos in Lightroom. I know there's a whole debate about whether or not to put the scans through the post-production phase. Personally, I think it's totally fine to do whatever you want with your own photos when it comes to editing, but you may disagree and I guess that's fine too. Although Noah Henderson over at Analog Resurgence put beautiful words to my thoughts and said it way better than I ever could. And if you're one of those people who doesn't believe in editing their film scans, bleh. Yeah, so there you go. All right, here's some more context. The moment that you have your film scanned, it's impacted by the scanning device, the digital sensor, the software for inverting color, the person that happens to be operating the scanner that day. All of these different things impact your final image in a variety of little ways. Maybe a more accurate representation of the image that you've taken on the film can be achieved by printing in a darkroom, but that's also impacted by the enlarger lens that you're using, the paper that you're using, the developer that you're using, the temperature that the developer is at. Everything kind of impacts film. So any school of thought behind it being like the truest representation of an image is just like garbage. Admittedly, this particular excursion happened a handful of months ago, and since then we've gone on a dozen more. So there's definitely a whole bunch of these kinds of videos already in the works. This is the first one, however, and I've managed to refine the format a fair bit since then, especially when it comes to the way we shoot BTS, B-roll and talking head on location. Therefore, the footage you're about to see may seem a little jarring, awkward, and maybe lacks a little flow, for lack of a better word. But I gotta start somewhere, right? So here goes nothing. Good morning. We are currently out here. Is it at or on Longholmen? On Longholmen. Yeah, I guess it's more like an area. It's, it's a little island, isn't it? But, well, the entirety of Stockholm is islands. So, uh, but yeah, we figured we'd get up very, very early. So we did. At least we thought we did. It's <laughs> worth mentioning that today is also the start of daylight savings. So. Um, however early we wanted to get up, 
cut an hour off of that. <laughs> so um, we didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. When we came walking on the other side of the island after having parked the car, I could just see the purple orangeness of the sky. So I picked up the pace a little bit and we got here just in time, but unfortunately not in time to start recording because Emma was using the Lumix G9 that we're shooting this on now to take her own photos. I'm going analog today and it's the first film I've ever put in this camera. Uh, I don't even know if it's gonna turn out or if the camera's broken or anything. I don't think so. The light meter is working and everything, like it's snapping photos. Um, but it'll be a nice little surprise. <laughs> We've stumbled upon this really gorgeous spot here and uh, uh, unfortunately we were a little bit too late but then on the other hand this is more like a scouting excursion kind of thing. It's Emma's first time out, well not really but kind of, with her own camera and uh, <laughs> this whole thing was basically her idea which uh, kind of blows my mind <laughs> so uh, I'm not complaining. overexposed by a half stop because I've been told to overexpose film rather than underexpose anyway. As far as composition goes, I'm getting these things a little bit out of focus in the foreground and I'm focusing on my subject which is City Hall. Since the water is really nice and even, I figured it might look good to keep the subject dead center, both horizon-wise and sort of center frame. And now, I, mean, I need to shoot a photo of Emma doing the sexy photo crouch. Noise. <laughs> Should we find another spot? I've taken about 10 photos. Right, may or may not look good. I, uh, I snapped a few photos here that could be quite nice to look at, but uh, Emma went out on her own <laughs> without telling me she's not filming anymore. So we have a few things to work on, but it's going, it's going well. <laughs> um, I think I may have seen another shot over here too. Some really interesting ice crystals forming here, so. Today. What have we learned? Plan better, wake up earlier, but then again we didn't know where we were going really. We figured Longholmen would be nice, probably, because there's a large body of water behind us and then City Hall and the sun was going to rise over there, we knew that much. Unfortunately there's a really ugly barge right there uh, with a lot of junk on it, so <laughs> can't have everything I suppose. 
Emma kind of wanted to focus on photography for a little bit, so I'm shooting this on my phone. <laughs> I've framed up a great shot out over the ocean here with some with some uh, branches in the foreground, slightly out of focus, and you know how it goes. I was just gonna snap and nothing happened. Turns out I'm, I'm out of film. Yeah. I brought a spare. A little extra camera in case something went wrong. My trusty old, the first camera I got when I got back into photography. It's tiny. It's the Lumix GM5, the 20 millimeter F17 version 2 for whoever's taking notes. Right, so that kind of concludes our little excursion. Uh, it's around 7.30. I think it went really well. We finished off by having um, a little bit of a coffee break. I ran out of film. We had a good time. I brought out my spare camera, the GM5, that ran out of battery, so we're heading to the car. Wow. I know I put money in. Well, actually it was free. Wrong zone. Okay, so they, they saw that I tried but they still gave me a ticket. 90 euros for a mistake in the app, because I, I use the uh, automatic uh, locate my vehicle kind of function. But that sucked. Uh, I mean, they're just doing their job, but come on. It pisses me off a little bit, but no use getting upset about it. Let's just go home. All right? Yay. Hmm. So there you have it. The first episode of hopefully millions more to come. The parking ticket at the end was a bit of a bummer, but in the grand scheme of things, it's really not that bad. Expensive and unnecessary, yes. Especially since it could have been easily avoided if I had been paying more attention to the app. But since I could see the sun rising in the distance, I was in a rush to find a good location before it was too late. Something I didn't really manage to pull off, unfortunately. But hey, we had a great time, and editing together this video now over half a year later made me appreciate it even more. So, hella worth it in the end if you ask me. I hope you enjoyed watching it too. If you did, and want to see more similar and hopefully better videos from me in the future, Please do the little like and subscribe dance below and tell everyone you know. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> the Ewok. <laughs> Like that. It's beautiful. <laughs>